Oh yeah, baby, it's time once again for another episode of This Old Outboard. Come and get it. There he is, you good boy. You good boy or good girl. You can get a quick enough look there. <laughs> get out of the road, man. It's a wild kingdom around here. Alright, I'm gonna go around you. Don't run under my tire. Go on, get. Anyway, since the day I got this motor, my little guide that fits on the rod that goes to the timer base, advances the timing, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's a weird setup. Instead of just being a straight rod hooked up, it has this puppy on it and, there, and a spring. And this is made to, to, to move with the spring tension and stuff. Well, these things are near impossible to get. I mean, even used on eBay, they just don't show up. So every once in a while, check eBay, check the part number. Sure enough, the guy right over here in Kissimmee had 20 of them. Now he must have bought out some new old stock from some place, you know, one of those deals. And that's about the only time you'll ever find one. So I'm gonna finally get that thing replaced. And this setup is really weird. Now I'm not, you know, no big motor expert, but on most of these motors, see the guide right there? And it's made to kind of do that back and forth and swivel around like in the spring. And then there's like a fork on the end there to hold the spring on. Well, most every other outboard I've ever seen in my life, they don't have that set up. It's just a straight, you know, straight deal. So it just seemed to be on these particular years, right around 92, that they came up with this idea. I have no idea why. Well, anyway, what happens on mine, sometimes it'll stick. And I keep saying, oh, I gotta put some grease on it, blah, 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 blah. Then it broke again on me, and I had to fix it again. And I never put any grease on it the second time, kept forgetting. And what happens is, you know, it come down to, to uh, neutral, it'll stick and, and hold my idle up too high. And it's just all the little stuff that just starts adding up. And then there was the other thing I got on to, came up in a comment. It's called heat soak. And it does it with every motor on the planet. You know, every gasoline motor, if you ever notice, in your car or wherever. Once you turn the key off, the motor's at, you know, 180, wherever it's supposed to be because of the thermostat and the cooling system. When the key goes off, the motor will heat back up. When we turn the key back on five minutes later and the temperature's way up over 200. And it's the same thing on these things. So I was wondering, do I have heat soak situation? Because what was happening in my situation Trolling around, trolling around, trolling around, turn the motor off. 30 minutes later, heat soak, sitting in the hot sun like that primer bulb is doing right now. And things can expand. You know, heat, 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 expand, expand, expand. So I'm like, am I having some kind of an expansion during the heat soak? And once I get it fired back up, the cooling system kicks in and cools it back to temperature and everything seems fine. And we're, you know, something like that, where do you start? You know, it, it expands, do I have air leak? Like I said, in my situation, it was that damn pump. Probably didn't even have to change that primer bulb. The old primer bulb and hose, the hose was shot. And that that's just from sitting in the sun and I don't leave it in the boat. You know, it goes with me when I take the tank. So hopefully get this on and uh, that's gonna help my situation out even more with other, other issues.
fast start lever. Don't prime it too much. I haven't started this thing in over a week, but it's been firing up real nice. Just like that. Let it warm up for a little bit and get my grease. This thing should be pretty easy to put on. Alright, so I got that thing popped out. It's, you know, I, I put super glue on it so it's crusty. And, and then I was getting in there, you know, with sandpaper, reaming it out, cleaning it out, smoothing it out on the inside there. As you can see right there with that little crack where it had broke. But it worked, I took that piece of fuel line and glued it right on. I'm gonna keep it too, just in case. <laughs> There's the new one right there. Nice and pretty. Get her on, get her in, get her done. There it goes. She slides nice. No grabbing. Throw a little bit more grease on it. See, I had adjusted it. You know, I had a little higher RPM. So, I may adjust it again. So I readjusted my uh, link and sink and brought my idle back up. Wow, check this out. See this? It was white. Right there was where that, I had that clamp. That's a, two, two things, either chemical reaction from this type of plastic touching this type of plastic and or from this thing getting so hot in the Florida sun. When I saw a black cover, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. A black cover in Florida? I mean, if it's in your garage, it will make no difference, but what the hell are you gonna cover it for if it's in your garage? Anyway, I bet they're all like that. Oh, look at that one. It's got a little tint to it. Any snakes under there? That's probably too damn hot in here for anything, so. So you see there, it did it too. And my seat is doing it. I think it's all from the heat, being under that thing in the heat. So you see that PVC pipe, it's all doing that because of this black cover. It's either a chemical reaction, plastic on plastic, or because of the heat. It just keeps getting darker and darker. Well, my marks didn't go on as pretty as I wanted, but that'll do. I'd rather paint the whole thing white. I mean, it's black crap in Florida sun. No good. So you see what's happening to this PVC pipe. Every time I take that thing off, they're getting darker and darker. Even the top of my seat, you see how it's kind of cooking? Oh, yeah, see these are glued in. Look at it, it's already, it's, it's actually warping from the heat. Look at it. That's crazy. This is stuff I picked up at the dumpster. Yeah, look, it's warped. It's melting. And these two I got from Tracy. Look at that thing, it's, it's, <laughs> it's at. It is melting. I, I'm a little bit shocked. I didn't. I, I thought it was just coming loose, but it's melting under this thing. Man. All right. So I got the '87 six horse back. All right. So here's what happened. So he picked up the Johnson six horse. I had put the big jet in it, beef it up a little bit, and it was running great. And then at the last minute, I said, I'm going to take the big jet out, put the right size jet in there. If he wants to go with the big jet, you know, we'll swap it back out. But I didn't want to give it back to him. 
you know, he, he didn't mind it being in there, but I just wanted, you know, it's, your, it's his motor, let him decide. So, I mean, the whole time I was doing it and everything, he didn't have a problem with it. I just felt the motor sounded too loud, it might have been too much, long term. So anyway, he takes the motor home, the thing ran like a champ in the tank, but when he put it on his boat, it was bogging down, half throttling up. Put it in the tank, runs perfect. So unfortunately for me, I didn't get a chance to test it before he picked it up. I've never given anybody a motor unless I test run it. It was the same thing. It ran great in the tank. I figured it should be fine. So he first took it out. I had it in a lake that had, you know, was just covered in weeds. And he thought maybe that was the problem. Maybe it was getting too many weeds wrapped up on it. Then he swapped it on another boat, I think, and he tried it. He said it was still bogging. I said, well, bring it back. Let me see what's going on. So that's where I am. We'll figure it out, find out what the heck happened, and go from there. I just got a gut feeling that it may have something stuck in the tank. I mean, in the bowl. What's all this crap? Some kind of gooey stuff on this thing. See all that? What's that? Anyway, so I'm going to tear it apart, pull the carb out. Man, this is such a pain in the butt on this little thing. This is the one that I had on there. This was the nicer of the two. They're identical carbs. They're both stamped. The exact same numbers inside, outside. And this one still has the choke on it. But here's what I did. I blew a little brake cleaner through with the jet in there. And then I did a little blow on it like this. It seems a little hard to blow. You know, it seems like it's a little tough to come out. So this this was the other car. Then back to the original car. On the carb it was on, it's even worse blowing through it. Unless it's my imagination. But hear that? Man, there's like nothing coming through. And that was my thing yesterday with something got in there and it's obstructing this thing. Whoa. Now I'll put it back in the other one. Do the same thing. See, it even sounds different, listen. Now see, that's where the magic happens in that nozzle, kind of vaporizes and does all the crazy stuff. I'm telling you, it's a lot tougher coming through on this one that it was on. Is it my imagination? Man, to me it seems a little bit harder to get some air through there. But my point is, or what I'm thinking, is just swap these two carbs out and see if there's a difference. Oh, it's much easier. And it's a cleaner sound, it's not going... So that's what I'm going to do. Let's try this carb. Can't be any worse. It's got to be better.
was full throttle and I didn't even have it all the way open. Let me lift this motor up. That second band. Not bad for this boat and that motor. Plus the motors like this in the water should have leveled it out. Alright, let me throw a little video on here. She runs full throttle again. I need motor mounts. I 
It's gonna be fun. Well, I finally cooled off. <laughs> ah! Yeah! Man, what a... It's gonna do it for me. Thank God that thing is done. I wanted to start on that 25 horse that hard to pull. We'll get back on it. Oh yeah, baby, you know the channel. Don't forget to subscribe.